Uh, stand to your right a little bit. Maybe Starting. Hold. Okay. Facing now. All right. Clear. Yeah, just a little bit. Or you can just step step back a little bit. Okay. All right. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Are we on? Okay. Good morning. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning's session. And welcome to our type pattern workshop. This is a school, and it is not a church. And neither are we affiliated with a church or a religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. Now this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kennedy in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2022. Now, in this school, we use and teach by the true and original names and titles for the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that he's Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Now, Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Now Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He's incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in His pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud is no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word of Son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself 
in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given us salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple, yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this book, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. But after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This kind of consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in this school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of school are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, a serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And the atheist to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And night is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watcher is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we'll have a prayer by Dr. Joseph Viles. Our scripture lesson is uh, Hebrews 4th uh, chapter in our scripture we read Dr. Ned Ramirez. We will have a selection of music after the prayer.
as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the Sabbath on the wise, and Elohim did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, for if Joshua, son of Nun, had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore the keeping of the Sabbath to the people of Elohim. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as Yahweh did from his. Let us do our utmost therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is cast into the heavens, Yahshua, the son of Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But we, in all points, tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I have read Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Circulation, 
see your heart valves moving, the whole shebang, you know. And uh, I said, well, that's weird. You know, and uh, so I went through it, you know, because I, I had to. And uh, it took about three hours for this whole process to go through, you know. And they would, uh, after I do one thing, they stick me under the uh, CT scan and checker. And, but anyway, when I was there thinking about uh, this thing, I said, wow, how technology has uh, progressed over the years, you know. Um, in order to see these things, your heart functioning, before they just do a simple x-ray, okay? And those experts would, would see these things and tell them you got complications. Now they can see the veins, the arteries, and everything, okay? Well, you look at this divine vision, panoramic vision that Dr. Kinley had, okay? And this thing is spiritual. It's like we have Yahweh, pure spirit, okay? But to understand this, he had to break himself down into the shape and form, which is wisdom, or intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Okay, that's what this, this image here is made up of, aloe here. Okay? But in order for us to find out, Dr. Kennedy you have to have receive a vision by Yahweh himself. Okay? So uh, I'm, I'm trying to say is, without going through this procedure, you just can't look at somebody and tell they got problems. Okay? You have to get an x-ray or now they got MRIs and all this stuff where they can see exactly what's going on in your body. You can't see it with your naked eye. Okay? Now, I was thinking, why do I have to inject you with this radiation solution? Well, we've been learning that uh, the primordial atom that the whole existence came into is hydrogen. Okay? And the byproduct of hydrogen is what? Okay? We have, uh, uh, what's it called? The tone, uh, deuterium? Deuterium, right? That's one of the processes of, of creating and splitting an atom, okay, or getting the radiation, okay, and injecting that into you so they can see. Now, I had injections where I could see them put the needle right in my joints and put the solution in, and they press a button on the screen, you can see the solution going out like a cloud, you know, around your joint. And I said, wow, this is something else, you know, before they sit there and get lucky to see if they get in your joint, you know, but now it's really precise where they could go in there and you can actually see the needle going in between the joint and the, the solution coming out, you know. And you can't see that with your naked eye, okay. It's like seeing a vision, okay. Uh, and, and it, it reflects back to me of the, how can you understand the Yahweh's purpose without having a vision. And a revelation. Okay? Now, before I said, we have it up here in the chart. Panoramic vision given to Moses. Panoramic vision given to John. And Dr. Kenley having a panoramic vision in this age. Okay? So we can understand the purpose. Now, for thousands of years, people have been walking around trying to understand, starting religions and all this stuff. Okay? Trying to understand the Bible, the scriptures. And they're reading it, they come up with some the whole Christianity, you know, everything. But without, like it says, in, uh, uh, without a prophetic vision, people shall perish. Okay? That's in the scriptures. And, you know, going through this process of this amazing me how they could see and peer into something in your body. You know, not just standing there looking at you, touching, pressing, you know, oh, you got this wrong. No, they can see exactly what's going on. Before, uh, I had a friend that used to live down the block, and uh, who remembers that, that program, a rerun? The big guy, you know, do all yeah. the break dancing and stuff. Well, what's, this guy was like this. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> and he was real energetic and stuff, until one morning, we went over to pick him up to go to school, because he said, why? 
and his blood is going He's in the hospital. Like, Whoa, what happened? Well, he woke up feeling that sick. He was all flushed out. And later on, finally had a heart murmur. Okay. He had to go in and get an x-ray. And at that time, he didn't have none of this MRI stuff or CT scans. Or he had to go by an x-ray, okay, and the ultrasound to find this murmur, you know, that he was born with. That he didn't even know he had. If he would have got up and went to school, he would have dropped dead. You know, how many people actually do, you know? Now that they have these, these, this equipment these days, they can see this stuff, okay, and operate on it correctly. But it takes these special instruments to go beyond the flesh. Now that's physical, okay, from a physical standpoint. But as far as a spiritual standpoint, we can understand why this stuff is happening. Okay? We can understand because now we know that we don't have to be doing uh, things out there to gain our salvation. Okay? Uh, we believe in the Messiah that He fulfilled these things and moved them out of the way. Now all we have to do is learn of Him. Now, I had to say anything to my family or anything like that because I know, like I said, well, we're going to pray for you and stuff like that. You know? Actually, I have to explain to them that I don't believe in that praying for me stuff. Because what I've learned is as the Messiah walked around on this earth plane with His disciples, He said, I'll pray the Father. Many times he said, I'll pray the Father. Okay. Now, after his death, burial, resurrection, he talks about how he's going to send a comforter in his name. Okay? He's going to teach you all things. He's going to do everything. But as we learn here in this tabernacle, as a high priest, at the time of the, the evening uh, sacrifices, he came up to bring the oblations or the petitions of the people to the altar, to pray to Yahweh, okay, to answer the prayers, okay. The high priest did it. The people couldn't do it, but they brought it to the high priest. Now, Yahshua Messiah, he's the high priest working in this tabernacle, okay. This tabernacle refers to this tabernacle, okay. And when I say a lot of times, when people say, oh, I'm going to pray for you, it's and, uh, well, it condolences, somebody passed away, I said, well, my thoughts are with you. That's the thing. We only can make, inter we only can make intercession within ourselves that Yahweh, or Yahshua, would pray the Father for us. Okay? If we don't, we say, well, I'm going to pray for you. Well, will you be the Messiah? You know, because of our understanding, it's the Messiah that does that. He knows what's going on. He makes, like it says in the scripture, he makes intercession without cease. Uh, with, with, with groanings without, I can't be out here. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing that your understanding is, he's going to take, you have to believe that he's going to take care of this stuff. I can't go to somebody, I'll pray for me. And, uh, no, Messiah said he's going to do that. He's working in this tabernacle. All I can tell you is that my thoughts are with you. You know, that's the inner thing. That's the, and, and, and we had lectures on those things about uh, uh, prayer and thoughts, what are thoughts, you know, and, you know, and it comes to the understanding that it's spiritual, okay? And these things that go on, go on within you, and it's the Messiah. Now that the, the veil is ripped out, we can look in and see who's sitting on our throne, and we have to rely on that, okay? I can't rely on people outside praying for me or praying for somebody else, you know, I know I heard it in, in this, also this teaching people say, you know, no prayer, but, you know, the understanding is Joshua's doing the prayer, okay, he's the one, not us, all I can say is, my thoughts are with you, Joshua knows, he knows in you, he knows in everybody, okay, because he's there, okay, now the veil's up, you don't have no understanding, and you'll continue with that. And see, what you're saying is, you do that, unknowing Yahshua's a liar. Okay? Because he does the prayer for you. He does the intercession. That's what this whole thing is about. This tabernacle pattern. Okay? He ascended up to the Father. 
sit on the right hand side. Now he's doing all that intercession. Okay? So if I post something up there, please don't tell me you're going to pray for me. Okay? <laughs> because I know it's in Yahweh Elohim's hands. Okay? And he's the one that guides these special hands. You know? Okay? That's all I hope for. And those people that haven't operated stuff, hope for the same thing. You know? So with that, I'll call the first speaker. It would be Dr. Will. Oh, you know Joe Sobiles is going to be going back to Columbia this week, right? Yes, sir. And I'd like to get, have him come up and give a few words before he goes back. That's a long ways to go if you look at the map. You know? So, Dr. Joe Sobiles. Thank you, Dr. William. Put it on. Put the ear. Put, put it on. Put it on. interested in, in uh, you know what's going on regarding the burning bush you see the burning bush does with the hook meaning that uh, in, in this burning bush that we call Moses attention so he has a, that our creator has a way if, it's, if your name is in the in, in the book of life you have a you you would be cut into this uh, burning bush, you will, you, your attention will come to it. And then once you come to it, you start searching yourself for yourself. And once you start searching for yourself, the, if these things are, you know, that the we say out of our mouth, are written in the, in the Bible, then you start trying to uh, find us, what's wrong with us? And, and there's nothing wrong with, it, with this gospel. It may be wrong with us in the physically, but nevertheless, we have, there's the Bible, and you have to keep in mind that the Bible has been written uh, for many years, and, and, and you have to uh, understand that there's translations in it, there's a, uh, there's a lot of uh, corruption in it, they, you pay, you put money in it, and then you have words changing your in, in that Bible, and you pass it out to your people, and then the people are beginning to understand, beginning to believe something that's not that's not true. You have to compare a couple of Bibles, and then on top of that, you have to translate. In my case, I had to translate it to Spanish, so I can begin to under, you know see it more clearly. And uh, again, to my testimony is that I've been here many many years already, but uh, you know I've been on and off because of my. Uh, my situation, only like uh, the previous speaker said, you know, that's in, in the hands of, of Creator Yahweh or, or Elohim. Going back to the, uh, the burning bush, it, it, uh, keep in mind Moses was here, then in the Jethro's ships for 40 years, and he never seen this, bur this bush burning as this particular day, back in. Uh, around 1490 before the birth of Yahshua the Messiah. So one day uh, he was, uh, the burning bush, he caught his attention, it would not go off. It was a small bush. And he said, well, how come it doesn't go off? It's not a big fire that we have here in Northern California. So Moses, uh, he, he came night, he came near the burning bush. He, had, he was asked uh, from the cloud, from the burning bush, the voice came out. You see this voice here. You try to put it, you try to put it face into the voice, and this is Yahweh Elohim. You cannot put face in, 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 a, in a something that is inscrutable, something that is incomprehensible, and inscrutable is invisible or unseen. So you have, to, you, you, I mean, nevertheless, you listen to this, his voice, and he told Moses, maybe you can pick it up in, in, in uh, Exodus around where he says, uh, take out the shoes 
from thy feet, because that ground which is uh, thou standing is holy ground. And uh, while well, you're looking for that, he, he was commissioning. The reason he caught Moses, the reason he he he, he caught our attention to, to to stay in this class is because he want he, this vessel. He's preparing this vessel. He can pass it on to somebody else, and somebody else can pass it on to, to another person. You cannot keep this to your own self. You have, once you understand it, that you have. That's all you talk about. They, they, they tell me, my friends tell me at home, my family tell me at home. That's the only thing you think of. You talk about. That's the only goal I can give you. That's the only stripper I can give you. I cannot give you anything else. But. The word of Elohim. The word of Yahweh Elohim. See? Being all in all, because this cloud, it covers everything. Because in Him we live and, and, and have our being, and we abide. In Him we live and have our own being. Right. We cannot escape. We cannot get out of the cloud. We cannot get out of something. You know, wherever we go, if we're still alive, we have to breathe air. So that's Yahweh Elohim. I don't want to make my testimony too long because... You want me to start uh, chapter 3? Um, I'll start at 2. Please. Exodus 3 and 2. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. You see when you, the first, when you read that, you say the angel of Yahweh it, it spoke out of the burning bush. And they... Uh, down the, go ahead, go, take it, please. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. You see that, excuse me, it, it, she says, it will not consume. A lot of people, when you tell these things to someone, you tell this uh, to someone their guardian, or the name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Elohim. This is the, 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 our introduction usually. We start telling our folks the name of our Creator is not Lord or nor God nor Dios. Uh, it, it, it's like a, he coming to it, to it, coming down so we can begin to understand him because we don't cannot understand. Him. It's too abstract. It's too complicated in, 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 the, in the in the in the spirit for us to comprehend it. So he did it for us so he, he can he can condescend it into Elohim and then from Elohim. It came to down to the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. That's the first thing so you have to uh, understand it. You have to search it for yourself. You have to you have to come to the realization that Yahweh He made us. So He said He made us. He made us breathe His name. When we come to this earth, when we're born, we inhale. Yeah. And then when the last thing when we expire, when we are all, you know, cranky and we are already aged and we, you know, I'm looking forward to, besides, I'm looking forward to embrace the new heaven and new earth, which is uh, right here. Where's Santo Santo Rome? I don't know why. No, right here, you see? It's right here. After this, you know, before this, it comes... Santo Santo, after this we hear, it becomes Santo Santo Rome. Oh, that's on the 40th plate. Uh, the 40th plate. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I'll show it to you later on. But just follow me. Keep following me through Facebook, please. And through YouTube. Uh, if you guys happen to be in town or nearby, come over, visit us. It's free. The doors are open. There's nothing to hide here. It's all here. So back to my story, the burning bush. Thank you. Okay, I'll continue. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto, unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from see, off thy feet. See, he's already instructed him to take off his shoes. So in other words, he's barefooted right here. For the, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. This is holy ground. Why? Because he's already going by the pattern. See, this is the, this is the pattern right here. 
This is the outer core. Ask people, people ask, what, what's the outer core? That's like the outside. You, you, you put a, uh, you fence out your, your, your belongings. You, this is like your, what belongs to you, your lot. So you, you fence it around, so that's why it's called the core around about. Go ahead, read Mora, Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father. You see, he's the Elohim of the father. Now he's talking about here, take up that shoe because you're the holy place. You see, it says right here, holy place. This is the holy place. From here to here is the holy place. See? Go ahead, read. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. See, when he says the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and Jacob, he's talking about, he's coming to Melchizedek, priesthood, Selah. See? So he, he's the one that gave the power to uh, Abraham. And he made the promise to Abraham that he see he was going to give the, the, the gospel, or the, go ahead, read and Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. So, so he, he promised this to Abraham, to Melchizedek, that Abraham had a promise right here. See right here? And there's a, a, a Genesis, uh, 403 years before the Moses law. Genesis 28, 14, you can read it. So, so he said to Abraham, look, uh, I promise you this, but after 430, uh, he, uh, he asked Moses, Moses, I'm commissioning so you can go back to talk to Pharaoh so you can take my people out of Egypt through the Red Sea. Genesis 28 and 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, yeah. and to the north and to the south. And in thee, in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. See, so all the families of the earth was going to be blessed. Meaning, that nobody, before he's fair, before he goes, before we move into the, new, uh, the next, the next generation, or the next age, excuse me, because we're right here. We're almost uh, you know, out of time, moving forward to the new, to the seventh, to the kingdom age. We're, right now we're at the present age of grace. Everyone? It does the one, yes. It is, yes, yes. But um, my, my train of thought is right now. Uh, before we, yes, yes. Before we move, we are, we're, we're ready to move to this one right here. Play 39, new heaven and new earth. People have a hard time believing this or seeing this. How can I, you know, from the flesh go into a new heaven, a new heaven, a new earth? What, what you know, uh, how am I going to get into a uh, transportation uh, take me to the new heaven, new earth? <laughs> See, with the Star Trek comments, beat me up, Scotty. You know, it doesn't work like that. You got to go through Yahweh, Allah, and through Yahshua, the Messiah, the new heaven, new earth. And this is what we're looking for. There's a lot of uh, happiness there. Everything about Yahweh Elohim is beautiful. I mean, you know, right here that he calls it, he told uh, uh, Moses passed away, so he, he you know, he, he did his job. He took, he, you know, he came down to a Pharaoh. The Pharaoh let him go. It, uh, almost a, more than a half a million people came, uh, yes men, not counting the, 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 the boys, girls, and females came to, to the wilderness. I had this almost half a million, 500, 503,000. 603,500. 603,500. They all died here. Because they all, you know, all, the only three that was, uh, only three, one of them was Joshua and they almost killed. The other one, I forget his name. They went over to, to the, they, 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 at that time they called it the, where the milk and honey used to flow. It was, you know, very beautiful. Um, I can go on and on, but I'm, I'm new. And besides, I'm excited to have been here, and I'm, I'm, I'm being here, uh, getting used to it. Uh, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you guys. I'm gonna say, okay. I said, this is what did well. 
But I come back. And I appreciate, you know, everybody that has a spare. They have a question us. And I'm ready. I'm ready to, you know, for the purpose of plan and plan of the hour of him. Uh, please pay the same attention that you do pay attention to me. Please pay attention to the, to the next speaker. Thanks so much for yelling. I want to yell the floor. Thanks so much for your time. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Joseph Miles. You never know, we might have a sister branch out there in uh, Columbia, you know. You have to go out there. Okay, uh, our next speaker would be Dr. Williams. Okay. 
Have it over there, madam. Go ahead. Covenant and agreement. Um, agreed by or lease deed legal contract. Mm -hmm. um, now the Merriam-Webster is the meeting of covenant is usually formal. Um, hold on. A, a usually formal, solemn, and binding agreement, mm -hmm. compact, mm -hmm. a written agreement or promise, mm -hmm. us, usually under seal between two or more parties, mm -hmm. especially for the performance of some action. For the, well, get, get that part, of it. the performance of some action. So all these covenants, see, that Yahweh made with these folks, see, and I think you even mentioned the word promise in there, didn't you? See, that was... Yahweh gave a promise to Abraham. That was a covenant. Right. See? An agreement, see, on some action that has to come out of the agreement between these two parties. Right. See? You yeah, damn it? See, there was has to be some sort of an agreement with Adam and Yahweh. Some sort of agreement with Noah and Yahweh. Some sort of agreement. Yeah, you got something. So the next one is the common law action to recover damages mm -hmm. for breach of such a contract. But see, in other words, see, the Mosaic contract, if you broke one law, right. you was guilty of the whole thing. Right. See, that's the damage. <laughs> you understand my, my point? See, uh, you can't break any of these covenants. Alright? The Tower of Babel, that was the breaking of the Noahic covenant. Right. Because Yahweh said he wasn't going to rain no more. He wasn't going to destroy it by water. They said, let's build a tower higher than the mountains, just in case he changes his mind. So what Yahweh did, he confused their tongues. That was a punishment for the breaking of this covenant. Mm -hmm. See? But now again, the six of them up there. So now we kind of have to try to ascertain well, what's the seventh one. Now, I have a Schofield reference Bible here. And in this Bible, it talks, it has annotations and things like that. And I have this one section here that according to Schofield and the Christian world, the way they look at it, they say this, that there are eight covenants. Now that's what they say. Yes. And I have it listed right here in, uh, in the annotations, okay? Uh, the eight covenants. In fact, I'm going to write them up here on the board. And, uh, and the scriptures that they say is the basis for the covenants. So, <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> so up here, uh, I'll do it like this. Schofield, for the Schofield Bible, because this is what I'm going to read out of. Now, according to the Schofield Bible, to Schofield, there are eight covenants. It says there are eight. And the first one they say is, is the Edenic. And the scripture they use, as a matter of fact, we can, we'll go to these scriptures, we'll read it. This is what they say. They say that the Edenic covenant is Genesis 2 and 16. And, uh, Genesis 2 and 16. And out of the ground Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field, and every bird of the heavens, and brought unto them the man to see what he would call them. King James. Oh, King James. Is that 216? That's yeah. right. Not King James. Oh, read the, I want the King James Version. That's right, because I'm reading out of the Schofield, and mm -hmm. Schofield is used to the King James Version. See, see the A.B. Trainer. Oh, I'm going to have to do a lecture about him one day and the sacred name movement, of which we are not a part of, which everyone always accuses us of. Right. Right. Do you have the scope? Do you have the King James? Uh, yes. 2 and 16 Genesis. All right. And the Lord God commanded that the man saying, every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Mm -hmm. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right. Now that's, now that's what Schofield calls the Edenic covenant. 
Dr. Kinley did not call this a covenant. Mm -mm. At least I've never read anywhere where he said this was a covenant. He said this was I hope this thing don't fall on me. <laughs> this is breaking down. Mm -hmm. Okay. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. Now, oh, I just noticed something here. Okay. On the, on, on the ancient dispensations chart, Dr. Kennedy's got Genesis 2.16. The 217. I think we just read that, didn't we? Yes. Read that again. King James Version. Genesis 216. 216. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now that's interesting. Because so see. Commanded. Yeah, now, now, okay, now Dr. Kidley just, okay, now I had to retract my words because I thought, I never did think about it. him calling it, he called it a commandment, but now he's saying that's a covenant. So now I'm trying to figure out, you know, because we got six of them up here, and where the seven, well, see, they got eight. You know, well, you know, maybe we should just go through the eight first, and then we'll go back, and then we'll, all right. Uh, the third one that Dr. That, uh, Schofield uh, talks about, is the Noahic covenant. By Noahic. Noahic. And the scripture that they had that they call is Genesis 9.16. Genesis 9, 16. Genesis 9 and 16. Mm -hmm. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature mm -hmm. of all flesh that is upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh mm -hmm. that is upon the earth. And okay, this good enough. All right. Now, the next one they say is the Abrahamic. And the scripture for that is Genesis 12 and 2. Genesis 12 and 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. Now the fifth one. Here's the here's the fifth one. Is the mosaic mosaic covenant, and for that they quote uh, Exodus nineteen and five. Exodus nineteen and five. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, 
then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay. Now the sixth one they got here, now this is the, the controversial one. This is the one I didn't know about. And here they call it a Palestinian covenant. Hmm. Now I didn't know about that one. See, and, and the scripture they use is Deuteronomy 30 and 3. This is, a palace, this is what they call the Palestinian covenant. This is, I'm talking about Schofield. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Mm -hmm. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Mm -hmm. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts, of heaven, from there will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from there will he fetch thee. Okay, now, it's saying here that Yahweh will bring back these folks, the Israelites, because in a few other scriptures, uh, uh, chapters later, you'll see where Yahweh said, I will scatter you. Mm -hmm. I will dispossess you of your land, and somebody else is going to, you know, like Nebuchadnezzar is going to take over, and I'll scatter you. But now here he's saying, but I'm going to bring you back. And so a lot of Christians look at that, the creation of the country of Israel in 1948, see, was a fulfillment of this, because it brought back the Jews from all over the world after they had been scattered back to Palestine at the time. That's what they called Israel at the time, Palestine, okay? Now, but, but that's what Schofield says is, is a covenant, okay? Now, the, the seventh covenant is... Uh, the Davidic covenant. That's what with David. The Davidic. And the scripture they quote here is 2 Samuel 7 16. Second Samuel 7 and 16. Mm -hmm. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Mm -hmm. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Uh, uh, the eighth covenant is the new the new covenant. And the, the scripture they quote here is Hebrews. Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 and 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days cometh, saith the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with mm -hmm. the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers this <coughs> day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I will regard them not, saith the Lord. Keep on? Yes. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Okay, good enough. All right, that's the new covenant. Now, what she's reading, she what she read Hebrews eight chapter, but it's really a quote from Jeremiah thirty one thirty one. Okay, and and Schofield knows this. Mm. They know this. I mean, they they, they put references in the Bible, so they so they know that. Okay, now these are the eight covenants that Christianity looks at. Okay, now we want to try to do is compare to see what Dr. Kinley's talking about and to see if 
if all of these, one of all of these are valid or not, and what Dr. Kelly's trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. Now I put this up here, now I may have to change that. Because <laughs> what Dr. Kelly put on the, on the chart. See, he got over there, Adamic transgression, Genesis 2, 16 and 17. So you just read that again, and then we'll... Uh... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what? <laughs> you should have had this a, a month, a, a, about an hour ago. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> I wasn't going to erase this anyway. I was just going to erase that. Um, yeah, read Genesis, please. Genesis 2.16. 2.16. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of. Okay, now he's got this scripture, which is the same as he did it, which uh, Schofield wrote. He wrote that for the Adamic covenant. So I'll just draw a line here and say Adamic, because he's using the same scripture here that Schofield says he did it. Okay, now, and he doesn't say anything about this scripture, which is Genesis 3.15. Let's read that again. Because this is what Schofield calls a covenant that, that Yahweh made with Adam after the transgression. Genesis 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, now I think I think I, I see the the fallacy what Schofield just did. He made this a covenant. We just read in the definition that a covenant also can deal with some sort of punishment or something if you right. break it, right. something sort of like that. What happened here? See, if this was a covenant, if y'all, if, if Kelly says that this this scripture here, what they call he did it was the first covenant and they broke it, right. which was touching the tree, then what they got here, what we just read, is the punishment aspect of it. You, you, get, you get what I'm saying? It's not like Yahweh making another covenant. He said, oh, well, you broke this, you know, you broke the law here. Well, this is the punishment that's going to happen. Death, you know, death is on all mankind, thorns and thistles, you know, all of that. But see, but Schofield called that an Adamic covenant. The circumstances. See, <laughs> see that, that's the difference. I'm beginning to look at this, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. The Noahic Covenant. Dr. Kennedy's got Genesis 9, 8 through 17. Yeah, it looks like Schofield kind of twisted it around, you know? Well, you know, well, first of all, these are these are carnal-minded Christians, right, one thing. Know. You know, and they're looking at it based on what they feel is, well, well Schofield himself was a dispensationalist. You know, dispensations is not something Dr. Kelly admitted, but he did perfect the thing. You know, as far as laying it out on what, on how the, the ages come about, how the dispensations come about, and within these dispensations, these are the covenants. Okay, uh, you got Noah? Yes. Read that. Genesis 9 and 8. Mm -hmm. And Elohim spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth which you with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Mm -hmm. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood 
to destroy all flesh. Okay. That's 17? Okay. Now that's what Dr. Kelly put down there for the Noahic covenant. Now, they broke that covenant, as we said. Mm. Read Genesis 11 and 1. See, Yahweh made a covenant with Noah and mankind, but mankind broke that covenant. Right. Read. Genesis 11 and 1. Uh -huh. And the whole earth was of one language mm -hmm. and of few words. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick from, for stone and bit bitumen had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city mm -hmm. and a tower mm -hmm. whose top may reach unto the heavens. Top, listen carefully, whose top may reach into the heavens, meaning higher than the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let us make us a name, mm -hmm. lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Lest we be scattered abroad. In other words, see, them building this tower was a breaking of this covenant that Yahweh made with Noah. Because they didn't believe, they said, oh, well, just in case he decided to rain again, and let's just build a tower high up to the heavens, so if, if it does happen, we'll be up there, you know, safe at the top. See, so that was the breaking of the cup of this covenant, and they received the punishment for it. Quickly read. And Yahweh came down to see the city and mm -hmm. the tower, uh -huh. which the children of men built in. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, mm -hmm. and this they begin to do. And now nothing will hinder them from anything they purpose to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their languages, mm -hmm. that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Okay, good enough. Now, that was the punishment. For breaking the covenant Yahweh made with Noah. Okay? Now, the next covenant Dr. King brings up is the Abrahamic covenant and priesthood. Uh, he's got up there Genesis 14 and 18. Genesis 14 and 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of El Elyon, and he blessed him. And said, Blessed be Abram of El Elyon, possessor of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And blessed be El Elyon, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram, Abram said to the king, of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto Yahweh, El Elyon, the possessor of heaven and earth, and I will not take from a thread to the sh shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldst say, I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me. Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, Yahweh Elohim, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, mm -hmm. and the steward of my house is this Eliezer? Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born of mine house is mine heir. And behold to, behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars of thy of thy of thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yahweh, and he counted in it to him for righteousness, 
And he said unto him, I am Yahweh that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Yahweh, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and she, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram. Is that all the way to twenty-four? No. That's good enough. That that that's unless it's something Promise. else in there that I need to hear. Because basically, the difference what Dr. Kinley is saying and what Schofield is saying. Schofield just got the promise, but Dr. Kinley includes the promise and the Melchizedek priesthood. Mm -hmm. See, because Yahshua has to come in under that kind of priesthood. So, because he was blessed by me, by uh, Melchizedek, who was king and high priest of Salem, of which he gave a tenth portion of. All right, and see, and also when when Abraham was given that promise, see all these things. Look, most of them I put it like that. See, the Adamic covenant. This happened before the Adamic dispensation. The dispensation and the covenant are two different things. See, now the Noahic dispensation happened before the Noahic covenant. In fact, the Noahic dispensation started on this side. See, it closed this age, and then afterwards the covenant was given to it. See, it closed this age and opened this age as well. And see, the age began, it was a Noahic dispensation, but it also began with the Noahic covenant, of which the people at the Tower of Babel they broke 101 years later. Okay? Then 427 years after the flood, this is when Yahweh approaches Abraham. See, we know about the promise that he gave Abraham, but that promise was, was sealed and confirmed through the Melchizedek priesthood. See, Elohim blessed, you know, Melchizedek blessed Elohim, I mean uh, Abraham, after the slaughter of the kings, and Abraham gave him a tenth portion of what he, of the spoils that he got. Okay? Now, go go here. This is the physical kingdom of Israel. Law of cardinal ordinances. And Dr. Kinley has here Hebrews 9 and 10. Alright? So let's let's read that and see how, how that goes. Hebrews 9 and 10. Which stood only in meal and drink offerings mm -hmm. and various washings and mm -hmm. carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. Okay, until the time of Reformation. Now, someone would ask, well, why is he using so-called New Testament scriptures? Well, those, those scriptures are really referring back to the Old Testament, if you really understand it. It's like really trying to show these so-called New Testament Christians, because they say, oh, no, I, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's all I mean, you know, the Old Testament, that's old. Oh, no, but see, the stuff in, in there is pointing back to the Old Testament. See, Yahshua's fulfilling it. Paul, in his writings, often refers to the Old Testament. All right? So now here, we have the mosaic. All right? Now, the next one we got up. Okay, now, matter of fact, just to, just to seal that, let's get uh, Exodus, the 20th chapter. See, it stood in beasts and drinks and darkness and washing. But when did they receive that? Mm -hmm. See, we'll give a little persnickety and just, you know, we'll go there and. Uh, you want 20 and 1? Uh, let me see. Yeah, start there. And Elmo spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh the Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Mm -hmm. For I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous God. Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers Upon the generation, upon children, unto the third and fourth generation right. of them that hate me. Yeah, good enough. All right. Now that happened June six. See, that happened fifty days after the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Right. Fifty days after that, they found themselves around Mount Sinai, and this cloud, this phenomenal cloud that they followed, was on top of this mountain and spoke down 
or actually thundered down the Ten Commandment Law and those 613 ordinances. That happened June 6, 1490. Okay, that was the beginning of the dispensations of the law, and that was also the Mosaic Covenant, because what is a covenant? It's a contract, right? Right. A marriage is a contract or a covenant. Yahweh married the Israelites here. That was I am your husband. He married them, right? He made a covenant with them, and he married them. So technically, they were his bride. See, and how many? And, and look, how many times did they break this covenant? See? Because we just read, "Thou shalt not serve no other gods." Well, what did they do when they got up here? What did they do out here? Build a golden calf out here. Not long after, it was thundered down to the covenant. They they broke the con the covenant. See, and Yahweh punished them. See. He punished them. He, he told Moses, grind this up, throw it, stew it on the water, and make them drink it. See? Because if you break a contract, a covenant, or agreement, there has to be penalties involved. It's no different than if you buy a car. That's a covenant or a contract. You contract with the loan company and say you will pay this amount every month. If you are late, they'll charge you a fee. But if you don't pay after a month or two or three, then they say, oh, well, you done broke the contract. We're, we're taking the car back. That's your penalty, you know. We'll, we'll, and, and look, you're not getting your money back. You might have paid two years on it, and you had another year left. But those two years went down the drain because now we just took your car back, and the money that you paid for it, that's gone. <laughs> okay, that's your punishment. That's your punishment for not honoring the contract or the covenant. It's the same way here. See, things happened there because when they broke the contract, see, then Yahweh would plague them, would punish them. See, even up here in Kings, they, they were told, don't, don't go after these people's idols and stuff like that. And they did anyway. Yahweh, Yahweh punished them. Don't think so? Read the book of Judges. Okay? See, what Yahweh did. Because of the contract. Okay? Now, so next one here. Now, the next one Dr. Kelly talks about is the Davidic covenant. The covenant with David that he made with David. 2 Samuel 7 and 12. Through 17. 2 Samuel 7 and 12. And when thy days be fu fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which mm -hmm. shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Mm -hmm. But my mercy shall not be shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. According to all these words, and according to all his vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in the, and sat before Yahweh, and he said, Who am I, O Yahweh? And what is my house, and that thou hast brought me here to? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Yahweh. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. Mm -hmm. And is this the manner of man, O Yahweh? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Yahweh, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, thou art great, O Yahweh, for there is none like thee, neither is there any Elohim beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation is, the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom Elohim went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their idols. That's a long five, five verses. 
<laughs> okay, so Yahweh made a covenant with David, see, and, and, and established his line. Why? Because David was from the tribe of Judah. Saul, who was the king before him, was from the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh drew him out to show him and his kingdom, come out with Saul, being a type of the adversary, or being a type of Lucifer ruling in heaven. See, that's a scripture. Get uh, uh, Genesis 49th chapter, I'm pretty sure it is. Get Genesis 49th chapter, that's what I want. Uh, 49, maybe around 6 or 7, I think. No, yeah, 49th chapter, uh, 8. Genesis 49 and 8. Mm -hmm. Judah, thou art him, him. Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm -hmm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Mm -hmm. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now, now, what's happening here, Jacob is dying. And he's got all his sons around him. And he's telling each son, this is, you know, what's... Oh, he's what's going to befall you. This is what your, you know, your fate is, destiny, whatever you want to say. So now he's talking to Judah, see, who's his fourth son. And he, this is what he's telling Judah. Go ahead. Judah is a lion's whelp mm -hmm. from the prey, my son. Mm -hmm. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion mm -hmm. and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Mm -hmm. This... The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter. What is a scepter? A scepter is a is a rod. Of, is a rod that signifies authority. Right. You know the scepter. You know. You know. I mean, like Queen Elizabeth used to have a scepter. You know, the sword because she would knight these guys. They would become so. You know, I knight buddy. You know. You know. <laughs> so and so. You know that kind of thing. You know. That's why you have some of the guys on this sir. This that sir Elton John. He's a knight, believe it or not. <laughs> Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. No, go ahead. Until Shiloh comes. Until Shiloh comes, meaning he who's right it is. Shiloh is Yahshua the Messiah. He who's right it is to see to sit on the throne. Who's who's coming after? The, you know, who's attached to to the genealogy of David? Because he's at the end of sixty three generations coming down from Adam. See. And he shall be the expectation of the people. Uh -huh. He shall be the expectation of the people. What is that? Him, him conquering death, hell, and the grave, and pouring out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. First to the Jews, then seven years later right. to the Gentiles, and even on up to today. Right. Okay? The Davidic covenant, see? In other words, see, David was a king. And see, David was the one that Yahweh waved his hand over right. his body. Mm -hmm. See, and that was and that became the template to build this temple. David passed on the specifications to Solomon and he built it. See, and Solomon's temple was built like a man. See, it was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. And each and each part was on a different level. The porch was at one level, then a little bit higher was the sanctuary, then at the top See, was the dome that was made out of gold. See, anybody out in the hall, this is free lectures. Come on in here and have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw someone peeking in. I said, hey, come on in. Yeah, this, this, look, this lamb that we eat is for everybody. We can't eat it all. Can't eat it all. So we got to invite the neighbor over, like they did. Just like they did, see, to eat this lamb. Because just, like just like they did, they had to go on a three days journey. Well, we're, we're, we're on a three days journey too now. See, we're just in the fourth age. See, and this fourth age began on the Pentecost. And the fourth age began with a new covenant. See, see, the spiritual kingdom on earth, spiritual assembly, Pentecost spirit, that we got it right here. So it's the law fulfilled. Also, we got here the New Testament or the New Covenant. And we got Jeremiah 31, 31, which we will now read. See, so just show this is what Dr. Kennedy is talking about, what the new covenant is. And that's confirmed with Paul over here when he writes in 2 Corinthians 3, the third chapter. Okay. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Uh-huh. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they bring, mm -hmm. although I was a husband unto them. When, when, did, when, did, he, when did he become a husband? Remember, right. he married them back here, Mount Sinai. That's why, that's why Jeremiah writes it like that. See, if you understood Jeremiah, the reason why he said that, he's drawing out from what Moses wrote. Right. Moses wrote that Elohim spoke down the Ten Commandment law to them, and he married them. So Jeremiah is drawing out, and he's just angry, saying, even though I was a husband to these people. Right. See? But they couldn't keep that covenant. They broke it, and they incurred the penalties thereof anytime you break any covenant or contract or agreement. Read. Saith Yahweh, mm -hmm. but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel mm -hmm. after those days, mm -hmm. saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, mm -hmm. and I will be their Elohim, mm -hmm. and they shall be my people. See, go ahead. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, mm -hmm. and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, mm -hmm. saith Yahweh. And see, and look, and, they, and people will know. People will know. I mean, I remember when I first come to class, oh, not too too long ago. <laughs> you couldn't tell people that the name was Yahweh. They were like, huh? Yahoo? Yahweh? Right. Uh, well, I had one guy, a friend of mine, he used to say, oh, you going that y'all's way? Thing. <laughs> you know, and then now, you, you see it all over the place, you know. I mean, there's a play, where the, there was one place, Hendrix used to play a cafe, Yahweh, Somewhere, you know, and, and the name has gotten out more prevalence now. And even to the point that my parents, when I first came to class, they thought it was just some 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 idiotic uh, uh, cult or something, you know. And, 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 and even though the name was in my mom's history books in her library, they refused to believe. They just thought it was just something made up until at the time, you know, people began to see it. So, oh, you know, yeah, well, he really does have a name. It's Yahweh. That's what he told Moses back here at the burning bush, you know. And so, you know, people accept that. I mean, people see it a lot more now. So more so than it was, say, 30, 40 years ago when Dr. Kelly was alive. Okay. See, and that's and because my name, and, and look, a lot of people don't realize it was Dr. Kelly. He was the first one to come up with the name, but it was through his efforts that the name got prominence. Right. And here's what I mean by that. In 1961, he, he published his first edition of his textbook, God, the Archetype Pattern, okay? And that book, he sent it to the Vatican, all right? And the Vatican read it, and we know they read it because Dr. Kennedy sent a couple of guys over there as representatives of, for, of him as a witness. I interviewed one of the guys. You know, he was Dr. Don Gordon. And he told me, and it's on the interview, that he said that when he, you, you, should read, you should look at his interview and how him and his friend got into the Vatican. It's really kind of humorous. You know, but it's, but it's showing you the power of Yahweh, how these two guys, these two hippie looking guys, got into the Vatican so that to be a witness to what Dr. Kelly had preached. And he said, and he told me, and it's on tape, he said that he saw our textbook, God the Archetype, in the Pope's lap during this council, you know, that they had. You know, the, the council, the Second Vatican Council. He said he saw our textbook sit on his lap. And I know if they, and if they had it and they read it, then they read the section in there about the names. And so some, some priest probably came up and said, hey, well, we could do something about that. We implemented a French Bible back in the 50s that has the names in it. All we got to do is take it, uh, translate it into English, and we'll put it in all our dioceses worldwide. And they did. And you know what they did? What they call it? The Jerusalem Bible. That's how that comes out. Don't think so. Get the Jerusalem Bible and go to the library and find the French Bible, and you'll see the same similarities. They'll even tell you that it's, it's a translation from that. It's an English translation of that. See, but that but that would not have happened had not Dr. Kennedy sent his textbook over there. See, it's a, the Sacred Day movement. Uh, don't even get me started. With that. But anyway, I, but I'll, I'll get on them another day. But right now we're going through these covenants. And so we've identified six covenants that Dr. Kennedy, that he's, that's on the chart. So now the question is, what is the seventh covenant? All right. And I, and I personally have not read anywhere 
or heard any lecture with Dr. Kim, they actually delineated other than what's on that chart over there on the Asian Dispensations chart. Now, I am tempted to look at this one right here, what they call the Palestinian covenant, because it's in, it's in, it's in Deuteronomy, and we had it read about the... Uh, that was it. Yeah, I know. That, that was my fault, but don't tell them. <laughs> Well, they was the ones that switched us around. We had, we were in the second, we were in the second floor room, you know, because the air conditioner don't work upstairs. So that means that we had to move all the stuff from upstairs and move it down here, which is why we start late. Okay. But anyway, this Palestinian covenant. Let's go back to that and, and explore that one a little bit. All right. Uh, that's Deuteronomy the thirtieth chapter. Uh, Deuteronomy, you want me to start with three? Uh, um, that's really, you know, there's really a lot before this. And uh, uh, yeah, start with start with uh, one. Start with thirty and one. Deuteronomy thirty and one. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come unto thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither Yahweh thy Elohim hath driven thee. All right, see, in other words, he, Yahweh is really telling them, look, I'm going to do this because you're going to screw up. Mm. Okay? But I'm going to scatter you. But I'm going to bring you back. Okay? That's what he's telling them here. That, so that's really like a promise. Okay? But now, does it rise to the level of a covenant? See, that's the question I want to know. Keep reading. Two, and shalt return unto Yahweh thy Elohim, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children will with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that when that then Yahweh thy Elohim will re, will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither Yahweh thy Elohim hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy Elohim gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh thy Elohim will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahweh thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and thou mayest live. And Yahweh thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And Yahweh thy Elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. All right, good enough. Well, that was a lot of reading. All right, now, that's in Deuteronomy, which Schofield calls the Palestinian covenant. Now, I'm going to read to you what Schofield says in his reference about what she just read in Scripture. This is in the Schofield reference on the side, and this is what he says. He says, the Palestinian covenant gives the conditions under which Israel entered the land of promise. It is important to see that the nation has never, has never as yet taken the land under the unconditional Abrahamic covenant, nor has it ever possessed the whole land. The Palestinian covenant is in seven parts. One, dispersion for disobedience. Two, the future repentance of Israel while in the dispersion. Three, the return of the Lord. Verses three, yeah, there are three, the return of the Lord. Four, restoration to the land. 
Five, national conversion. Six, the judgment of Israel's oppression, oppressors. And seven, national prosperity. All right? Now that's what they feel. But now, let me put this in context. What I have here is a 1967 edition of the Schofield Bible. It was re re copyrighted and reprinted at that time. Maybe some extra stuff might have been added. But basically, it's really the same book that was printed and, and, and in 1945. And the information that I'm reading here is from that 1945. This is before Israel became a country in 1948. So there, Schofield is actually trying to make a prediction saying that Israel has to be returned back to its land and all these other conditions will have to follow as well. Well, Israel did go back to its land. You know, they did get, you know, they, they, they went back and uh, they established a country. But as far as a national conversion to what? You know, Israel, they, they have all kinds of secular uh, religions. They have the Orthodox, the Reformed, the Conservative. There are some Jews that are actually atheists. You know, a lot of people think, well, how can that be? But this is but it's possible. Karl Marx, who was the father of communism, was a Jew and he was an atheist. Okay? Isaac Asimov, who was a very uh, noted science fiction uh, writer and scientist himself, wrote a lot of science fiction books, was a Jew and he was an atheist. I have one of his history books in one of my in my bin over there that he wrote about the land of Canaan. Very good book, you know. A lot of history stuff, but he was a Jew, but he was atheist. Okay, you want to say something? Nick? Yeah, listening to this, it sounds more like uh, Esau and Jacob, the blessing, because he's talking to a group of people here. We just got through reading Israel, and when we looked at it, we learned that when he starts uh, at the New Testament, he starts with a man, ends with a man. This is a group of people that he's you know, making a, a blessing, mm -hmm. and then uh, we read back in the, in, the, in, the, in the law with the blessings he gave to the different Isaac, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, this is what's going to happen, you know. That's what I'm thinking uh, that Schofield and the other guys are looking at, and they're calling it a, a, a covenant, you know, instead of what it's called, it started off as a blessing. Hmm. Well, you know, what we just read, all of this is all encompassed in the, uh, in the Mosaic Law. Mm -hmm. See, because in the Mosaic Law, you know, Yahweh said, you know, there are blessings and curses. Gotcha. Okay, now, since we just read that in the, uh, about, in the scripture, let's just go and just read, uh, it's in Deuteronomy, I think it's the, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is before, this is the 28th chapter, 2849, because this is where, because it, because you have to go back and read this, and it culminates in what she read in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Read 2849. 2049? 2849. 2849. Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from the end of the earth, mm -hmm. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, mm -hmm. a nation of fierce continents, which shall not regard the person of the old, mm -hmm. nor show favor to the young. Mm -hmm. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land mm -hmm. until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn wine or oil or the incense of thy kin kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates mm -hmm. until thy high and fence walls come down wherein thou trustedest unto throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which Yahweh thy Elohim hath given thee. All right, now, it's a whole lot more, but just to read it, that's Nebuchadnezzar, that's in the law, and that's, and the law is prophesying the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, because right. Yahweh is saying, well, if you do this, he's not saying that, 
He's saying when you do this, this is what's going to happen. And it culminates when we, when we read in the 30th chapter, he said, well, I'm going to take you away, but then there will come a time I will bring you back to this land. Jump down and read verse 63 in that chapter. And it shall come to pass that Yahweh rejoiceth mm -hmm. over you, mm -hmm. to do you good, and to multiply you. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh will rejoice over you, to destroy you, mm -hmm. and to bring you to naught. In, in other words, you break, my, you break my covenant, I will punish you. Just like, then we read the definition of a covenant. You break the covenant, you're subject to the, you know, yeah, to the penalties within that. Well, you break this, this is what's going to happen to you. And it did happen to him. He told him it was going to happen to him. Keep reading. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. Uh -huh. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve, and, oh, and there thou shalt serve other idols mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, mm -hmm. even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Mm -hmm. See, that was, they are going to be wandering, and they did, for a couple of thousand years, because, look, it's, it's in uh, 604, in 601 BBY, and we went through this a few weeks ago, about the times of the Gentiles, right. Nebuchadnezzar took Israel into captivity, right. Right? and they were in captivity for 70 years, all right, dispossessed them of their land. And took them into captivity, and Yahweh and, 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 and uh, Nebuchadnezzar burnt, burnt the temple down and destroyed the wall around Jerusalem. Okay? Now that did happen. Alright? And Dr. Kelly addresses it in the textbook when he talks about the times of the Gentiles. Okay? Uh, when you, uh, you read now okay. a, a holy name, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I want a King James and read stick verse, uh, yeah, read, read the King James version. Uh, verse 6. Verse uh, 65. Just keep reading from there. Oh, 65. Uh-huh. Verse 65. And among thee nations shall thou find no ease, mm -hmm. neither shall the, uh, the sole of thy foot mm -hmm. have rest. But Yahweh shall give thee there uh, a trembling heart, mm -hmm. and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear the day and night, and thou shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would Elohim it were even? Would well, 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 Elohim, see in other words, it's going to get so bad. It's said, Oh, would Elohim that it would be evening time. Mm -hmm. Read. And at eve thou shalt say, Would Elohim it were morning? And when, that, and when night comes, you'll be like, Oh, what else? It would be daytime. In other words, day and night. You're not going to get any rest. Right. See? That's what it's telling you. And that's what happens to the net. I'm talking about this is what happened to the net. Keep reading. And for fear of thy heart, whether thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And, El and Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again, and shifts. Okay, good enough. Now, Yahweh is, is, is said he's going to dispossess them, and he did, all right? But he did bring them back. Talk about the natural Jew, you know, which is a reflection right. of the spiritual Jew. That doesn't mean because they're a natural Jew, they get because, see, look, that went out. The natural Jew went out with the death, burial, resurrection right. of Yahshua Messiah and the day of Pentecost. See, because in the day of Pentecost, this is where the new covenant See, and under the conditions of the new covenant, this is one of the conditions of the new covenant. Romans 2, 28. See, this is under the new covenant. See?
Romans 2 and 28. Mm -hmm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, mm -hmm. neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, mm -hmm. whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh. Of Yahweh. See, that's, that's the two Jews. And the New Covenant does that. See, because it's the Holy Spirit that translates you into a king, into the kingdom of his dear son. And also translates you into the... See, look, the times of the Gentiles. See, Dr. Kennedy delineated it he, in this textbook. He wrote about it. He talked about how Nebuchadnezzar came and how the times... And Joshua talked about it, That Jerusalem would be underfoot until the time... Well, this week. Luke, uh, Luke, uh, I know it's in Luke, 23 maybe, 23rd chapter, how about 22nd chapter, uh, no, 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 21st chapter, 21 and uh, 24. Luke 21 and 24. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away. Oh, yeah. well, go back to 20. Get a train. I, I, know, I know it's a lot of reading, but see, but all of this is necessary. This is why Dr. Kennedy even said this. He said, look, you got a book coming out of the Bible. Try reading it sometimes. <laughs> That's what he used to say. Yeah. Luke 21 and 20. Go ahead. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mm -hmm. then know that the desolation Therefore, is not. See, that was see, Joshua is he's using the law and the prophets because he's going back right. and he's pulling back what Nebuchadnezzar right. did. See, when you see this, see, then, then you know his destruction is not. I mean, it's already happened, but he's but he's using this as a focal point to make a prediction. If I put it like that, but keep reading. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. In other words, flee to the mountains. See, in other words, don't stay. Just get out. Flee to the mountains. In other words, seek higher ground. Seek, according to the pattern, the highest ground is the most holy way. Seek higher ground. Get some elevation. See, spiritually speaking, that is. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Mm -hmm. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But woe unto them that are with child, mm -hmm. and to them that give suck in those days. Mm -hmm. For there shall be great distress in the land, mm -hmm. and wrath upon this people. See, he's talking about even now. See, even those that give suck, you know, they know, what are you talking about? See, if you're going to class, you know, stay in class. Because see, because there are things out there that will make you, you know, leave class or leave this doctor, cause you to be aborted or get a miscarriage or something. See? That's what you don't want, but continue. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, uh -huh. and shall be led away captive into all nations. Mm -hmm. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, now here's Joshua saying, is that Jerusalem shall be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right. Now, that, now the way Dr. Kelly laid it out. See, what he, uh, I don't want to erase this, but what he did was he took the time that the, that the, uh, the Israelites were in captivity, right. which was 601 BBY. See, that's when Daniel and those folks, you know, there was three excursions. See, and it starts in, see, mm -hmm. <sighs> Second Kings 24 and 1. I may as well just bring that up. How am I doing my time? How much time does he says he has for that? Okay. Yeah, on there. Uh, it's 153. Oh. 153? Okay, so I, you're, you're right. I do have five minutes. Second Kings. Second Kings 24 and 1. Mm -hmm. Second Kings 24 and 1. Mm -hmm. In these days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. All right. Now, the year that that happened was 604 BBY. All right, and Jehoiakim became a servant three years. In other words, he was a good right. boy for three years. Right. He paid his taxes and everything. Then at the end of three years, he got tired of paying taxes, and this is what happened. And he turned and rebelled against him. After three years, he said, man, I'm getting tired of doing this, man. And he told Nebuchadnezzar, I ain't praying no more. Mm -hmm. And Nebuchadnezzar was like, what? That's a gentleman. Uh, fellas, we need to go down here to Judah. 
and regulate because I got to go down here and see about my money that I'm not getting. Go ahead. And he always sent against him bands of the Chaldees, uh -huh. and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, mm -hmm. and bands of the children of Ammon, mm -hmm. and sent them against Judah uh, to destroy it. Now that was in 601. Now to correlate that, get Daniel the first chapter quickly, because I only sound like got five minutes, so I'll try to take this up. Now the, the thing about the covenants, we got six of them that Dr. Kinley identified. I, I want to denominate this one for the seventh covenant. I just don't like the word Palestinian. You know, you know, but it's in there, all right. But but I bring this up, and if you folks out there, you know, the, I'm talking about the, the smart ones out there, you, you know, if you got something that you want to add to this, or, you know, feel free to give me a call or write me or something, you can tell me, you know, what you think this, the seventh covenant might be. But I'm, 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 I'm using this one, all right, because Dr. Kelly, in a way, kind of delineated, he didn't call it out by name, but he does delineate it in this textbook about the times of the Gentiles, okay? And it's tied in to the scriptures we read in Deuteronomy about, you know, this being dispossessed of the land, the, uh, being uh, dispossessed of themselves, being scattered, and then being brought back, but we... Daniel, first chapter. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, uh -huh. king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, mm -hmm. unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And Yahweh gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Okay, see, now that was the beginning of the deep, first of three deportations of, his, of Hebrews from Judah to Babylon. Okay, so now they were dispossessed of their land. All right, and, and, and they would, and that, and that land didn't come back until, well, actually, that's another lecture in itself, which I'll get into. <coughs> it's probably a part two because. The Davidic, because see, yeah, we don't study it much, and that'll probably have to be the next time, because between the book of Matthew and the book of Malachi, there's 400 years, see, that we don't talk about, don't study. It's called the intertestamental period. Did you know that during this period, the Levites, see, who are the Maccabees, they established a kingdom, and they themselves had a king and a high priest after the order of, Le of, uh, of, of Levi. See, a Levitical king. Uh, well, uh, well, the king was actually the king and a high priest. See, I believe I remember the name. His name was Alexander Janaeus. In fact, his great-granddaughter married Herod, Herod the Great. That's how Herod the Great got into that family. It got power. But that's another story. Maybe we'll do it next time or a time after. But see, but in the fact that they did that, they broke the Davidic covenant. Because they look back. So see, they look, these folks, the Sadducees, Seraphim, you know, they got Bibles too. They go back and read the scriptures about Melchizedek. They read that about Melchizedek being king and high priest. So these folks, these Levites said, hey, we can do the same thing. Because they're carnal minded, they don't have the Holy Spirit, so they think, oh, well, we can do this too. And so they established their own kingdom. I'm talking about the Maccabean, you can read this, this is in the history books, the Maccabean kingdom, see, that they set up after the, the revolt. See, they had the revolt against the Greeks that took over, they revolted against them, and they set up their own kingdom that lasted for a little over 100 years of a king and a high priest after the Levitical order. But it was a violation of the Davidic kingdom because Yahweh said he was going to establish the covenant after the order of Judah, not Levi. See? And so that kingdom could not stand. And it had to fall. And it did. See? It fell to the Romans. But Herod, who had married into the family, see, he, and plus his father, Antipater, was, was got in good with the Romans. He got to, you know, his father got to become procurator of Judah. They said, well, we need somebody to, you know, to watch them. Oh, I'm doing, I know these people, you know, I know these people, you, you trust me, hey, you know, I, I'll handle them for you, bro. That's what the Herod family did. They built the temple. See, they built the temple. See, the show that said, oh, yeah, we're really, you know, we're going to build a temple, you know. And look, just like Cain back there built a city, and just like Nimrod built the Tower of Babel, Herod built that temple without divine specifications mm -hmm. and without divine instructions. Mm -hmm. See? So he's violating that too because see, because Joshua said he was the temple, the new covenant. See, that's Joshua. 
But Herod said, oh, no, no, we're going to build a temple in you, and you folks in here, we're, we're going to rule. We're going to rule forever. That's not how, not how it goes. Okay? So, in conclusion, I don't know if I solved anything here, but I will say this, just maybe this, I wouldn't call it a Palestinian covenant. I don't know what to call it. But that, in my opinion, may be the missing seventh covenant that Dr. Kennedy talked about. Only because by inference, because of the times of the Gentiles, and because of the scriptures we read. See? And really, the whole thing about it is this. Not so much, I mean, that's a physical example, Israel coming back getting their land. But the spiritual reality is simply this. Here you are. See, you're a Gentile. You don't know any better. But when you come into this gospel, you come in here, you come into the knowledge, and you get translated by the Holy Spirit, then it can be said, your time as a Gentile has been fulfilled. Why? Because now you're a spiritual Jew. You are a benefit of the new covenant, the new testament. And of all the covenants that have been before, you get because the covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham, you benefit from that too. How? Because you are saved by grace through faith. Why? Because it was given to a man as of a promise. And we are the recipients of that promise that was given to Abraham. Of grace through faith. See, and all of that. Okay, and so when you become a spiritual Jew, then as I said, your time as a Gentile has been fulfilled. And so now you're ready, see, to be translated at the end of this age into his body. That is to say, you have an immortal spirit dwelling in a physical body, but then these physical bodies must right. take on immortal glorification. See, as it was brought out by the first, by the, one of the speakers, about the new earth state. Okay, all right? Uh, we're out of time. That's all I have to say for this time. And uh, we hope that this was edifying. I, I know it was a bit uh, reedy and stuff, but, but I, I tried to address this as best as I could as far as these covenants. Again, I don't have the total answers on it, but I outlined it as best I could. And if anybody sees something that I didn't or missed, feel free to let me know. Thank you very much for watching. We hope that. Uh, Everything you heard was edifying today, as always. Be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. And with those two words, hallelujah. joining in and also those out there in, in uh, YouTube and Facebook land, we salute you and uh, thank you for your donations, uh, speak of donations. Okay, we are a non-for-profit okay, organization, we do exist uh, on uh, your donations, we can pay for the rent for this place, you know, so if you do want to donate, there's the address there. Uh, also, if you want to order a chart book, you know, we have all the charts in the book. Uh, contact Irene. If you want to have a chart made like these, contact Irene. We'll give you the price and all that. All right, uh, I call my daughter and Annette to give uh, the doxology. And uh, thank you all. Okay, class, let us all stand to be dismissed. I'll be reading the doxology from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
There's a big fight coming up. So. Yeah, in like less than two weeks. Is it worth it? Yeah, for them, it's worth it for me.